Yes. Whenever you're ready, Joe. Okay, let us pray. First of all, Heavenly Father, before we ask you for anything, we want to lift you up this morning for being the God that you are, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Father God, we just want to tell you how much we love you, how much we need you, and tell you, Father God, that we miss you, Father God, in a mighty way. This class miss you, Lord, that we come together once again, Lord, to give you the glory, to give yes. you the honor, and to give you the praise, Father. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Father God. You woke us up this morning, Heavenly yes. Father. Let me say that again. You woke us up this morning, Heavenly Father. And we're here to praise you and glorify you and lift you up and magnify your name and yes, tell you how much we love the God. We can't make it without you, Heavenly Father. We're going to brag on you this morning. You brought us a long way, Father God. You just keep on blessing us and 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 blessing us. I could say that. And blessing us as you've been so good to us, Lord. And we want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We can't thank you enough in our lifetime, but we're going to thank you right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being the God that you are, Heavenly Father. We love you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Yes. Thank you that we could come together once again, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father. Bless every person on this Zoom, Father God. Yes, Bless them from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, Father God. Yes. Touch right now, bless right now, anoint right now, because you're a good God. You're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Father God. Bless this class in a mighty way, Heavenly Father. Bless the teachers in a mighty way. Bless the readers in a mighty way, Lord. Yes. From the top of their head, to the soul of their feet, Father God. And we pray, Father God, that you would get all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. This is the day that you have made. You made this day, Heavenly Father. I feel like praying all day to you, Heavenly Father, because you've been so good to us. You brought us through a pandemic, Father God. You're keeping us under your wings of protection, Father God. We thank you for protecting us, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the vaccine. But we know that Jesus is our vaccine, Heavenly Father. And we praise you and give you the glory and give you the honor, Heavenly Father. Teach this class, Lord, because we need to hear from you, Father. We need to hear from you. We thank you. We honor you. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 Thank you, Joel. And amen. Thank you. Good God. Wonderful prayer. Thank you. Okay, so we're back. So welcome back, Bible Pursuers. Welcome back. I miss you guys. I was thinking about the last class. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Can you guys see the yeah. lesson? Yeah. Okay. Say that again. Can you guys see it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the first screen just says, welcome back, Bible pursuers. So Life Class of Salem Baptist Church. We're going to do a, re a review since we've been gone so long. I was thinking about the review and how Reverend Watson had you guys uh, do the last class. And I can still hear Betty McMurray talking about Zeus and Hermes, you know, giving explanation of the classes. I didn't do that this time, but I was thinking about it as I was reviewing it. Uh, it was a wonderful class. Uh, the last class, June 27th. And today is September the 12th. So we're gonna, just going to do a review and we're going to have Belinda just review us. Reverend Watson did God Open Doors, Iconium, Division, and Lystra Delusion. And then we're going to go into our lesson today, uh, Declaration, and then we're going to start Acts 15. 
So uh, Belinda, whenever you're ready. Uh, can, you, can you see it? Can you can you can you open it up a little more? Hold on, let me Very see if I can small. pull it up. Okay. Uh, okay, God open doors. Yes. Okay, God open doors. It says, I will open a door that no man can shut. Signs, wonder, miracles. Iconia, Division, Act 14, verse 1 through 7. Paul and Barnabas preach with power. I'll make it a little bigger. Give me a second, make it a little bigger for you. Is that better? Yes, okay. 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 All right. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Iconium Division, Acts 14, chapter 14, verse 1 through 7. Paul and Barnabas preached with power and won a great number of both Jews and Greeks who became believers. Some of the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their mind against them. Still there, Belinda? Um, Belinda? I'm here. I'm here. There was something in the front. I couldn't read. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the apostle stayed there a long time, preaching boldly for the Lord, who bore witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. This caused the people to be divided. Some sided with the Jews, some with the apostles. Then a mob of Gentiles and Jews, along with their leaders, decided to attack and stone them. Keep going. <coughs> mm -hmm. Lystra, delusion, Acts 14, 8 through 20. While they was in Lystra, Paul and Barnaby came upon a man with crippled feet. He had been that way from birth, so he had never walked. He was sitting and listening at Paul preach. Looking straight at him, Paul realized he had faith to be healed. So Paul called to him in a loud voice, stand up. And the man jumped so, jumped so his feet and started walking. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in their local dialect. These men are gods in human form. Barnaby was the Greek god, Zoo, and that Paul was her Hermes, since he was the chief speaker. Now the temple of Zoo was located just outside the town. So the, pri the priests of the temple and the crowd brought bulls and wreaths of flowers to the town gate and they prepared to offer sacrifice to the apostle. But when the apostle Barnabas and Paul heard what was happening, they tore their clothes in dismay and ran out among the people shouting, friends, why are you doing this? We are merely, merely human beings just like you. We have, come, we have come to bring you the good news that you should turn from these worthless things and turn to the living God who made heaven and earth the sea and everything in there. In the past, he permitted all the nation to go their own way, but he never left them without evidence of himself and his goodness. For instance, he send you rain and good crops and give you food and joyful hearts. But even with these words, Paul and Barnabas could not restrain the people from sacrificing to them. Then some Jews came from Anak and and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. 
But after the disciple had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. The next day, he and Barnabas left for Derby. Thank you, Belinda. You're welcome. So just looking at this part, I wanted uh, uh, the qualities of Paul and Barnabas. They said they, they preached with power and they preached boldly. And no matter how many times the, the, you know, they stoned them or tried to attack them, they went right back. They went right back and started preaching again. So it's a lot of good stuff in these two verses. Even though that was the last lesson, we're going to talk about it at the end. Uh, so this week's lesson, God opened the door, continue. Antioch and Syria declarations at 14 to 20, 21 through 28. And don't close the door, the dispute at 15, 1 and 8. So this is just a, the map that we that I got from Reverend Watson lesson, just showing you their path. And it's going to be important in this one, in the declaration, because the disciples are going to go back, even with all of the attacks and the stoning, they're going to go back before they leave just to ensure that the, the you know, that the, uh, the Christians, the, the new converts, as we would say, that they're solid before they leave. And they're gonna set up some local leaders before they leave, just so if the church will continue. So Mark is gonna read the scriptures. Someone needs to mute themselves. Mark is gonna read the scriptures, um, Antioch and Syria declarations, Acts 14, 21 to 28. Can you see it, Mark? I see it. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. You muted. He's muted. You have to unmute yourself. Hello, testing one, two, three. You. Testing. Thank you. We hear you. We okay. Hear you. They preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true in the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with, a, with prayer and fasting committed them in the Lord in whom they had put their trust. After going through Pisidia, they came to Panthea, and when they had preached the word of Perga, they went down into Italia. From Italia, they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they have now completed. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. And they stayed there for a long time with the disciples. On their return to trip to Antioch, the missionaries were engaged in several important ministries. First, they preached the gospel and made the disciples taught many. It was difficult to understand how they got back into the cities from which they had been expelled, but the Lord opened the door. Second, they strengthened, confirmed, the believers in the things of Christ and encouraged, exhorted them to continue in faith. Continuous is proof of is proof of true faith in Jesus Christ. Paul made it very clear that living the Christian life was not an easy thing, and they would all have to suspect some trials and so. Third, they organized. As the local church is both an organi organism and an organization. For if if it for if an organism is not organized, it will die. Paul and Barnabas ordained spiritual leaders and gave them the responsibility of caring for the flock. If you compare, you will see these elders and the bishops refer to the same office, and both are equivalent to pastors. The word translated ordained means to elect by a show of hands. It is possible that Paul chose the men and the congregation voted its approval or, or that the people selected them by vote and Paul ordained them. Finally, they reported their sending church in the finally Body, they reported their sending church on the work of God had done. They had been gone at least a year 
and it must have excited it must have been exciting for them and for the church when they arrived back home thank you mom you're welcome so now we're going to go into the scriptures a little bit so now we're going to have donna read and donna you're going to read 22 21 and 22. Donna, are you there? No, I said you was going to read 22, 21 yeah. to 28. 21 to 28? Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 21. They Thank preached you. the gospel and made disciples. Rather than leaving new convert to try to figure, figure the Christian world by themselves, Paul and Barnabas returned to the very cities where their lives had been in danger fearless to preach the gospel and to teach others to obey. Verse two, they strengthened, confirmed the believers in the things of Christ. Paul and Barnabas go back through each of these cities to do some inner soul care ministry. They build up the Christian faith of these disciples by strengthening their souls. Back in Acts 11, with the church in Syria and Antioch, when the church was in its infancy, before it ever considered sending out any missionaries filled with all kinds of brand new baby Christians, Acts 11 and 26 tells us that for a whole year, Paul and Barnabas met with the church and taught great numbers of people. In other words, souls are strengthened when they are nourished by teaching from God's word. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 states, so Christ himself gave the apostles the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14 states, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. This prompts the question, what are you doing to ensure your own personal spiritual strengthening? What are you doing to make sure that your own personal soul is strong? This needs to be among our very highest priorities in life. We need to make sure that we're on intentional, effective path towards spiritual growth and development. What commitment will you make for your own spiritual strengthening? Will you commit to consistent weekly church attendance? We need more than just two hours a week to stay spiritually strong. Commit to Bible study each week. Commit to a daily quiet time of prayer and studying the Bible. Commit to reading a good book on Christian theology. Commit to discovering and designing a personal spiritual workout plan that will strengthen your soul. Verse 22, and encouraging them remain true to the faith. The middle of Acts 14 and 22 says, encouraging them to remain true to the faith. The very fact that they needed encouragement can help but remind us that not everyone remains true. Not everyone stays the course of the Christian life. In fact, there are any number of people who claim the Christian faith for a time, but then wander away from it. And that's one of the main reasons that Paul and Barnabas decided to return back through these towns. Remaining true is not guaranteed and it is not easy. Perhaps a better way of thinking about all of this is that a vibrant, lasting Christian faith is a faith that is constantly under construction, constantly being renewed and built up and at times torn down in certain areas that lack a proper foundation on God's word. Uh, Romans 12 and 2 encourages us, do not conform to the patterns of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, and, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. 
In other words, one of the best ways to keep our faith from being deconstructed is to allow God's word to continually renew our minds, to allow our faith to be constantly under construction under the transformative influence of God's word and God's spirit. This points us right back to the importance of strengthening our faith daily. Deconstruction is not the only thing that makes remaining true to the faith challenging. Verse 22, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They warned the disciples about coming, hard, about coming hardships. A lifelong spiritual journey that endures does not come easily. Acts 14 and 22 concludes, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Not only do Paul and Barnabas warn these disciples about coming hardships, but they also clarify that they should expect them as a must. Enduring hardships is part of entering God's kingdom. Romans 8, 17 through 18 states, now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. To be clear, it is not that we somehow earn his kingdom through suffering, but rather that we share in Christ's suffering as part and parcel of sharing in his glory. They go hand in hand. Paul describes it this way in 2 Timothy 2, 8 through 12. This is my gospel for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. If we died with him, we would also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. In other words, going through hardships are opportunities for our faith to prove that it has endurance. Verse 23 to 25. They organized the churches. Paul and Barnabas were now headed home to give a missions report to their sending church in Syrian Antioch. This is why another key part of their life, of their long life strategy for strengthening, encouraging, and warning was to plant local churches in each and every city. Churches that would be there long after they were gone. For this strategy to work, each of these local churches need local leadership. Acts 14 and 23 says, Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom he had put their trust. Verse 26 to 28, they reported to their sending church on the work God had done. Acts 14 ends with Paul and Barnabas sailing back to Syrian Antioch and giving the first missions report in the history of the local church. Acts 14, 26 to 27 says, from Italia, uh, somebody blocked me, okay. From Italia, they sailed back to Antioch where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. This brings us to the end of Acts 14 and marks our halfway point through the book of Acts 14, chapters, chapters down 14 to go. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. There's a lot of stuff in there. I wanna start right here and talk about what Paul and, and Barnabas was teaching those disciples before they left. And if any there's any time during this pandemic, we definitely need to strengthen our souls. I don't know about you guys, but this lesson was truly a blessing to me uh, as far as enduring, because we have to endure, especially we have to endure anyway, but there's a, no time like today that we really have to strengthen our souls. So when excuse we me, about, excuse me, Mary. There's yes, people that aren't um Muted. And it's, yeah, that, and it's I'm sorry. a little, you know, distracting. Distracting. Thank you. Can everyone please mute themselves? Thank you, Candice. I thought I was the only one hearing it. But if there's any time 
there's no time like now for us to strengthen our soul during this pandemic. Someone is still unmuted. Can you guys find who that is? Mary, I'm trying, but it's uh, it's not showing up. I just think yeah. it's just feedback. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Sonia. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Okay, but we're going to continue on, but we're going to talk about what Paul and Barnum did. They retract. They was leaving to go give a report, but before they left, they went back through the cities that were they wanted to kill them, attack them, and do all these things to make sure the Christians were secure. And the things that they taught them is things that we need to, we, we're doing, we have to do them because we're Christians, but it was just good to see how they went back. They made it their business to go back to make sure they were stable and to teach them how to endure. Because a lot of Christians, some people will get knocked off their square because some of the things that's happening, some of the things that we go through, if you're not uh, strong in your faith, if you're not praying daily, trusting in Jesus, no matter what's going on, I know some people will say, you know what? Enough of this Jesus stuff, but this class right here, and it's because of you guys, because of the strength that we have in numbers, but this is good information for us right now, especially during the pandemic that we're going through. You no know, people are still dying. I've lost people during the time, this little short time that I haven't seen you guys. You know, we're losing people, it's a lot going on, so. Being strengthened is important. So that part about whether you commit yourself to strengthen your soul daily, and it's strengthen your soul, your inner man. So I just wanted to pause right there before we got into uh, chapter 15, but we're gonna go on, but don't close the doors. Someone steal this, maybe that's feedback. So Candace, Candace Brooks. Mary, I believe the feedback is coming from- Hold on. It's okay. Where, I believe it's coming from your mic. From my mic? Yep. How would I know? I'm. Uh, I'm gonna mute you, and then we'll figure. We'll see when when uh, Candace starts speaking. Okay. Okay. Um. Don't close the doors. The dispute. Acts one and eight. Council of Jerusalem and God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. Certain people came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom taught, by Moses, you cannot be saved. The, this brought Paul and Barnabas into sh a sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas, Barnabas was appointed along with some other believers to go up to Jerusalem to see the appoint, the apostles and elders about this question. The church sent them this way and as they traveled through Venicia and Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been coveted. Okay, I lost my space. Okay. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and elders to whom they reported everything God had done to them. Then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, the Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep Okay, required to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and elders met to consider this question. After much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago, God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from the lips the message of the gospel and believe. God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them just as he did to us. 
the progress of the gospel has often been hindered by people with closed minds who stand in front of open doors and block the way for others. In 1786, when William Carey laid the burden of world missions before the ministerial meeting in Northampton, England, the eminent Dr. Ryland said to him, young man, sit down. When God pleases to covet the heathen, he will do it without your aid or mine. More than one spirit-filled servant of God has had to enter open doors of opportunity without the support of churches and religious leaders. Paul and his associates faced this same challenge at the Jerusalem Conference about 20 years after Pentecost. Uh, courageously, they defended both the truth of the gospel and the missionary outreach of the church. They were, there were three stages in this event. <coughs> One, the dispute. Acts 15, one through five. It all started when some logistic Jew, Jewish teachers came to Antioch and taught that the Gentiles, in order to be saved, had to be circumcised and obey the law of Moses. These men were associated with the Jerusalem congregation, but not authorized by it. Identified with the Pharisees, identified with the Pharisees, these teachers were false brethren who wanted to rob both Jew and Gentile believers of their liberty in Christ. It is not surprising that they were people, that there were people in Jerusalem church, there were, there, there were people in the Jerusalem church were strong advocates of the law of Moses, but ignorant to the relationship between law and grace. These people were Jews who had been trained Okay, I lost my space. It's up too high. Okay. These people were Jews who had trained to be who had been trained to respect and obey the law of Moses. And after all, Roman, Galatian, Hebrews. Okay, it's up too high again. Had not, Hebrews had not been written. There was a large group of priests in Jerusalem assembling as well, an assembly as well as people who still follow some of the Old Testament practices. It was a time of transition and such times are always difficult. What were these, uh, the, legal, what were these legalists actually doing and why were they so dangerous? They were attempting to mix law and grace and to pour the new wine into ancient brittle wine skins. They were stitching up the rin, the rin, vial, and blocking the new living way to God that Jesus had opened when he died on the cross. They were building the wall between Jews and Gentiles that Jesus had torn down on the cross. They were putting a heavy Jewish yoke on Gentile so shoulders and asking the church to move out of the sunlight into the shadows. They were saying a Gentile must first become a Jew before he can become a Christian. It is not sufficient for them simply to trust Jesus Christ. They must also obey Moses. Several important issues are involved here, not the least of which is the work of, of Christ on the cross. 
as declared in the message of the gospel, God pronounces a solemn anthem and the and a theme on anyone who preaches any other gospel than the gospel of the grace of God found in Jesus Christ's son. Wait one second, Candice. One moment, Candice. I still hear that feedback. Uh, can you guys mute midday? We, we can't. We're trying, but we cannot for some reason. Oh, okay. That's okay. All right, Candice. Okay. When any religious leader says, unless you belong to our group, we cannot save, or unless you participate in our ceremonies and keep our rules, you cannot be saved. He is adding to the gospel and denying the finished work of Jesus Christ. Paul wrote his epistle to the Galatians to make it clear that salvation is wholly by God's grace through faith in Christ, plus nothing. Another issue involved with the nature of the church missionary program. If these legalists, we, we call them the Judaizers were correct. We call them the Judaizers were correct. Then Paul and Barnabas had been all wrong in their missionary. Along with preaching the gospel, they should have been teaching the Gentiles how to live as a good Jew. No wonder Paul and Barnabas debated and disputed with these false teachers. The Antioch believers were being troubled and subverted. And the same confusion of disruption would soon spread to the Gentile church. Paul and Barnabas had found. This was a declaration of war that Paul and Barnabas could not ignore. God gave Paul a revelation instruction, instructing him to take the whole matter to the Jew, Jerusalem church leaders. And to this, the Antioch assembly agreed. They agreed. They in Acts 15 and two, the gathering was not a church council in the denominational sense, but rather a meeting of the leaders who heard the various groups and then made their decision through the mother church in Jerusalem did have great influence. Each local church was autonomous. Many points, main points of chapter 15, one through eight, false, teachers troubled the people. Paul and Barnabas sent to Jerusalem. Their reception in Jerusalem, the elders and apostles meet to settle the dispute. Next week, the defense, Acts 15, six through 18. The decision, Acts 15, 19 through 35. Questions, anyone? Thank you, Candace. So we all raise our hand directly to Candace. No, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for the reading. Uh, so now, questions, comments. Um, think I've done. Yes. Thank you. Dear Father God, I just got to thank you, Lord, for another day. Every day that you see it is a great day, dear Father. Yes, God. But present us this beautiful day. <clears throat> when I open my eyes and I can look out the window, wasn't seeing nothing but the alley, but I saw your sunshine and your tree waving, dear Father God, and I was so thankful. I'm thankful for every one of us, Father God, who yes, are allowed to get on here this day for something that we needed to hear and we learned to feed our spirit, dear Father God. So I just thank you, Lord, for going with us every step of the way. Thank you, Father God, for continuing to bless us during this pandemic. 
We know it's not over, dear Father God. Just as I began to get on to the class this morning, I had to stop, dear Father God, with my daughter here crying and telling me that my other daughter was crying because uh, just this morning, uh, a former teacher of one of the children had died and they were just so upset. And and I I just told them, okay, I'm going to talk to them after church. But you knew it already, dear Father God. So consoled though, you're still losing We are losing people from gunshots, silly violence, dear Father God. We are losing people from ordinary disease. And we're still losing people from the COVID, dear Father God. But you, Father God, still sit on the throne. And I yes. know that reminds us all the time that you sit on the throne and you still got it under control. So even more. Mm-hmm. Uh, Juanita, Michelle, and, and a few others. I can't remember all the names, but you know your father. Uh, when we feel like you are not there, I can remember that poem. I used to recite it, only can remember a little bit of it now. And it says that when you stop and you didn't see any footprints but one set, that was when I carried. So I know that you still carry your love to your Father God. Yes, thank you. I thank you for the Sunday school class, dear Father thank God. You. The church, yes, yes, yes. Teaching church. That teaches your word, dear Father God. Yes. It teaches us how to incorporate it in our everyday lives. I thank you, dear Father God, because even though we've been gone two months and it seems so strange, the first week when I clicked on and I said, hmm, we still got some information. So every week we receive information, Lord Father God, so that we can continue to read, continue to study, and be connected, dear Father God. They don't just prepare these lessons today. They don't leave us just like you don't leave us, dear Father God. And I thank you for keeping them and having them to reach out to us, steadily keeping up and encouraging us, dear Father God. So I just thank you. I thank you for this class where people can speak oh. up and pour out their feelings, dear Father yes, God. Well, yeah. you, may, you may sit in church, dear Father God, and you may sit in virtual church and real church, but you can't get a chance to open up like they've been doing this morning, dear Father God. So we thank you for this class and every class, dear Father God. We thank you for your word. We thank yes. you for your son, dear Father God. So Father Father, I just want to ask you to to lift up our young people, to lift up our young people, our children and our nieces and our nephews and grandchildren and all other children, ones throughout the city that are not our children. Yes, Lord. They need you. They need you. Show us how to continue to live and how to speak so that we can encourage and guide them along, dear Father God, and not lose them along the way because we jerk too hard or we push too hard, dear Father God. Yes. Guide us so that we can guide them. Continue yes. to keep them, dear Father God. They don't even understand how it is that they are walking around, many of them, and have not taken the shot and have not gotten COVID. They think it's something that they're doing, dear Father yes. God. As my own nephew continued to tell me, I'm all right, auntie. I'm all right. I said, but you don't understand who's kept you in that job all these years. You don't understand who's kept you with your family that you all can go on vacations and stuff, even during this pandemic, and you're all right. You don't understand. So, Father God, just just show us the way to how to feed our young people, how to reach our young people, how to reach them all throughout this city, dear Father God, throughout this entire country of ours, throughout this world, dear Father God, because we have so many still lingering on hate, still lingering on hate and misguided thoughts in their hearts, dear Father God. So as we now go into further into this day and we see our virtual service, we ask you to continue to bless the pastor, the leader and shepherd of our church, his entire family, and all of those who support and give comfort, dear Father God. 
and continue to do the things that we need, they need to do so that we are connected in this way. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for every blessing. I thank you, Lord, for every bit of protection, for every bit of comfort, for letting us thank you for forgiveness over and over and over, dear Father God. I just thank you for all of it. And dear Lord, just follow us, continue to follow us. And I continue to ask, Lord, that you thank keep you, me Jesus. in your word. Keep me in your word. Keep me under yes. your wings, dear Father yes. God. As though all of us are on here. Yes. Keep us covered, dear Father God. Yes. Keep us protected. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.